I hope we see him. And I hope we see Louis C.K. come back as well. Does Louis C.K. remind anybody else of Jim Cramer from Mad Money, or is that just me? His look. <laughs> he has that look. Yeah. A little bit, yeah. I don't know who's that. A little bit. <laughs> Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Movie Toast Podcast. Today's our reviews episode. I'm here with Tommy. Hello. I'm here with Dennis. Hello, everybody. And I'm here with Adam. Toodaloo. Nice to see you, fellas. And Good to see you, too. Tommy, why don't you start with what movies you saw this week? Oh, not me. Somebody right. else. I can't talk. Dennis, why it, don't you start with the movies you saw this week? I, I saw being on the set of a tennis commercial all week this last, this last week. So nice. unfortunately I did not get to indulge in some fine cinema to share with you gentlemen. Okay. Can you talk, about, the, can you talk about what tennis it was or what it, what was the commercial? Uh, it was a, it was for um, a head tennis brand, but that's pretty much it. Cool. Hey, that's cool. Um, yeah. That's pretty cool. Yeah. Um, better work uh, than sit at home watching movies. I mean, you'll have time for that now, right? Oh yeah, all the productions. Uh, anyway, we'll talk about that in the episode where we talk about news. This is reviews. Yes, so I got a standpoint. What I saw two movies this week. Thanks, Tommy, for asking. <laughs> I saw Onward, and I saw Bloodshot by Vin Diesel. Oh yeah. Now nice. come out right away and say I didn't really see Bloodshot by Vin Diesel. Wait, wait. Did you did you go <laughs> and fall asleep like me, or did oh, you not did see you it? Pull an no, I didn't. I didn't see it. I just thought it'd be funny if. If it seemed like someone saw that movie, because uh, no I, one's gonna see that movie. You don't I know. Say, I, I would go. Seen it. I would go see that. Yeah, I want to see Diesel, it. Oh, Sorry, apparently he you. thinks it's like Spartacus. He's no, Spartacus is good. It's like Spartacus. Hey, we'll oh. never know until we see it. You mean with Kirk Douglas, like we talked about last week? No, I think he's talking about the Showtime uh, <laughs> TV series Spartacus. <laughs> oh well. Anyway. <laughs> I don't know. I, it could be, I think I he's. Know. I think he's wrong. I saw Onward. It was a Pixar movie. We talked about it last week. Ah oh, man, how did I feel about this movie? It was right. okay. Um, so there you go. <laughs> okay, like is, you can't tell if you liked we, it or didn't like it, kind of thing. Are, are we talking the good dinosaur or <laughs> like? I see, I see what he's doing. So it's better. <laughs> it's better than somebody the listened to the episode. <laughs> it's not like Cars Two or, or the Good Dinosaur bad. No. Okay. Okay. Well, that's saying something though. So it's d- don't be expecting to be shedding tears. Like I, I shed a tear into... at the end. Well, okay, oh, really? Here, okay. Let, let me put in like a little personal qualifier here. So this <laughs> look at I those qualifiers. The, look like, at the qualifiers. Look at the qualifiers. The subject matter kind of hit a little too home for me. Um. We, with when oh. their dad like clearly died from like cancer or whatever like uh, that was me and i was the older brother and it was just bringing up all this like uncomfortable shit while i was watching the movie has nothing to do mm. with the movie has a lot to do with me and it's just hard to get into i was it, saying huh? to myself oh this is horrible subject matter they should never put this in a movie <laughs> uh especially not a kid's movie and then when i kind of bounced out of that for a second i was thinking to myself why did they bring back half the dad? Why didn't they just bring back none of the dad and go on an adventure <laughs> with just the brothers? <laughs> That's a good the, question. The yeah. legs don't do anything. And then I was thinking, then the ending was good. So uh, I feel like it was slight cop out, but at the same time, it did what it had to do. Yeah, okay. it's. I will put it in terms of last week. It is no Wall-E. It is no Inside Out. You know, gotcha. uh, it's no, it's no Toy Story uh, original, but and no, it's not up. We have another Pixar Ooh. movie coming out at the end of the year. Soul looks like another sad Pixar movie, but it looks to seem to be hitting the nail on the head there a little bit too much for me in that trailer. Mm. The guy clearly dies, and it's supposed to be about like don't waste your life doing a movie podcast. Kind of looks, <laughs> God, <laughs> kind of looks like a knockoff of <laughs> of of. of uh... <laughs> <laughs> oh boy mm-hmm. sorry uh so what would you rate this would, would it be a red light green light or a yellow light i don't know why i didn't say red yellow green and uh, it's like a fuck it light um <laughs> did you wait for the, which light is wait for this on disney plus uh that's gonna be yellow, uh, yellow. yellow. 
That would be a solid yellow light for me. Solid yellow. All right. Okay, I got a question about Onward. I was I forgot to ask this last week when you guys were talking about it. Um, I just this is for my own personal. I were the voices, the actors, were they easy to recognize, or did they hide like disguise the voice with like any accents or anything? I feel like they were easy to recognize. Actually, yeah. They were easy to recognize. I will say that I really disliked having those two guys in this movie. Did they not get a lot? Or, I mean, was there not good voice chemistry? <laughs> I, thought, I, I liked it. I'm, I'm on the opposite spectrum here, but I would have liked other people too. I don't to know. my recollection, have there really been big name actors like that in a Pixar movie before? Owen Wilson's Cars. We've got Tom Hanks. They've had, yeah, Pixar. they've had yeah. some. Yeah, they yes. <laughs> yes, they Toy have. Story. Okay, but I'm thinking like Bugs Life. Who's who's the voices in Bugs Life? Uh James Woods. James yes. The bad guy. James, no, um, that wasn't that wasn't James Woods. That was the uh, uh <laughs> the guy who we can't uh, House oh, of Cards. Yes, he House must not be oh. named. Oh the uh, pedophile? Kevin Spacey is the name yeah, we're trying to think the, of. Yes, it is the name. Do you do you think that it could have I feel like it had great potential, but it just floundered. Yeah, it it seemed like it was rushed. If they gave it, I don't know, three more months of attention, it could have been amazing. Yeah, they had some. I think they had some big name. When did when did it come out? Nineteen ninety eight. Tom, Tommy, we're, we've moved on from that man. We gotta keep. I it mean, it rolling. only it only adds credence yeah. to my point that <laughs> in all the movies since Toy Story, when Pixar wasn't a proven brand yet, I ate up yeah. so much time just being angry about this. Adam, <laughs> what did you see? Oh, guys, I saw two movies this week. Uh, I'm going to first talk about something that I wanted to see in theaters, but it had a very limited release. A movie starring Chris Ludacris Bridges. That's uh, oh. Ludacris. And Terry Crews. Terry Crews plays John Henry in the movie John Henry. It's a modern day version of John Henry. It's uh, a <laughs> Terry Crews was once in a gang and he got out of the gang and he's a very, very good guy these days. And uh, there was like this girl that was kidnapped and used as a sex kind of girl for the gang and she escapes and goes to him oh god it felt like a fucking film student shot this the the sets were bad the script was bad the acting was stale like i like terry cruz i think he's a dynamic actor and everything's in not in this uh it was such a letdown just found it in huh yeah and there were so many scenes where it was just talking people talking like there was the gang members having a game of poker talking for 10 minutes really there was there was John Henry and his dad talking. There was the girl talking with John Henry. It, it was just talking. There was action, and it was kind of lackluster action. So sounds like ludicru- the, sorry, go ahead. I was going to say, it sounds like the better title for the movie, Talking with John Henry. <laughs> <laughs> John Henry talked. Uh, no, it was, how was Ludacris? Did he, was he like he is in oh, yeah. Fast and Furious? Uh, he's, he's good. It's kind of cheesy. The thing is, I think he was like, uh, he played the cousin of Terry Crews. Like, I don't picture those two as relatives. I don't know. I can't buy it. Did he oh, try to sure. be funny all the time? Uh, no, I, I feel like it was slightly more serious. Like, uh, I mean, just... I guess when your character's name is Hell, <laughs> you're not going to be as, as really? funny. That's yeah, funny. his character's name was Hell. Oh, and then they, they cut back and forth. Like, you have like a VHS camera of like John Henry as a child with his dad. John Henry later has a camera when he's doing drugs with the gang members and when he's doing things with the gang members. And it's like, None of them are Terry Crews up until later <clears throat> on, and it's just such a missed opportunity, I feel like. If you're going to do a modern day... Oh, and the reason his name is John Henry, not because he's the John Henry, because when he came out of his mama, he gripped his daddy's hand so hard, he said, my son's a John Henry. Oh, fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> Please tell me you said that uh, when you found that out. You I said Oh, I did. That's literally a line of dialogue that the dad has. It's no like in the theater. Be... Did you say? No, did you? Oh, no, no, I, please I, tell I, me you said that in the theater. Oh, I, no, it, was, it was. It wasn't. It was a red box. It wasn't even a theater. Oh, yeah. It was that limited a release. Is, oh, wow. is this red box a red light for you? They, oh, oh, oh it is dollar. definitely save the dollar eighty three. Save the dollar. Oh, oh no. Go, oh, go no. buy anything else. Go buy some this hand sanitizer. I got two <laughs> questions. How'd you find this? Um, I heard about it a while ago because I like to look at IMDb every week and see what's out. I'm like, oh, Terry Crews is starring in a movie as John Henry, and it's set in Los Angeles? Yeah, I want to see that, but I forgot all about it because it didn't come out in my neck of the woods. And then 
as that red box. I'm like, oh, fuck, this is here. I rented it right away. And yeah. And then my second question is, do you want to fill everyone in on what the real John Henry story is for in two seconds? Just so uh, they're not I honestly distracted don't by that. Recall. Isn't it like he was like a big like uh, tree cutter lumberjack guy with a blue ox or some shit? Was that him? No, you're Paul Bunyan. That's, that's, that's oh, Paul Bunyan. Bunyan. Well, I, I don't know. He's a strong man. <laughs> he had the hammer and he did the railroad against the robot and then he died. Yeah. Right. The spike. I'd rather go it. see that was it. you again. What you just said in two seconds was better than the movie. <laughs> <laughs> But I did see another movie this week, so I can save it. Ooh, let's hear it. What was it, Adam? I saw the biggest movie that nobody's seen, The Hunt. The Hunt, oh. Yes, yeah. and wow, it's quite the movie. It. Me and my brother saw it. There's only 10 other people because nobody wants to Obviously, because you remembered it right away. No, no, this movie <laughs> is legit. It is badass. Nice. It's hilarious. It's badass. It has a great cast. Oh my god! It it's action packed. It's I'm hilarious. I, I remember yeah. seeing the trailer for this. Yeah, this is the movie that was supposed to come out last year, but Trump had an issue with it, so they didn't want to release it. And because the uh, rich people kill people known as the deplorables. deplorables. Oh Wait, man, hilarious! So, is it supposed to be hilarious? Oh yeah, it, it says had, horror it's, thriller. Well, it's, it's <laughs> like a Blumhouse movie, so they work comedy into it. I mean, uh, given me and my brother were the yeah. only two laughing our asses off in the movie, but that's not you get that kind of dark humor. It's the dark tone. I don't know. I yeah. feel like I get what you're, I, even just from watching the trailer, I totally get why you would laugh so at it. So pretty like, much, yeah. Sorry. And you see a slim down Ethan Supley in here, huh? Yeah. Pretty much these uh, rich people fly a private jet to where the deplorables are told it's uh, Arkansas, but it turns out it ain't Arkansas. It ain't even America. So they fly, they, they drug these people, knock them out, fly them to another country. They wake up. There's a crate, a pig comes out of the crate, there's weapons, and then all hell it breaks out. So this uh, stars a uh, star set of cast here, guys. Hillary Swank, Ethan Supley, like you said. Ike uh, Barinholtz. Ike Barinholtz. He, 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 he's, he's even slimmed down since his Mindy Project days. Um, uh, Dennis from It's Always Sunny in Philadelphia. What's his name? Uh, oh, fuck. I oh, my know. God. Yeah. Glenn uh, Howard. Glenn, Glenn, Glenn Howard. Howard and, oh, what about fuck. their leading uh, lady there? What, what's her uh, name from uh, Glow? Uh, from Glow. Uh, I forgot yep. her name. Uh, the, the second lead of Glow. Oh, God. And there's so many other it. people. Uh, Emma Roberts is in it. Uh, I have so all the names people. here, but because I've never seen Glow, I can't tell you who you're talking about. The, the blonde but, lady. So, yeah. Emma Roberts? No, no. But it's okay. Oh. Let's. we got to move on. Go yeah. see it. This is a green light. I don't know if theaters are going to be open next week, but if you get a chance, check it out. It's fun. Awesome. It's funny. Looking Excellent. forward to it. Yeah, I'm going to try to see that one if they don't shut down all my movie theaters. Tommy. Oh, were you talking about Betty Gilpin? Betty yes. Gilpin. Yeah, yes. that was her. Betty Gilpin. Yeah. She was at the top of the list. <laughs> I thought she would have said that. She, she's the, top the star list. of this movie, and she deserves it. Got it. it. Yep. Okay. Tommy, what did you see this week? Well, I saw a bunch of movies, uh, none of which, as usual, were in theaters. <laughs> That's okay. Uh, let's start off with my favorite one of this bunch. Uh, the 1990 Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Mm-hmm. No animated, no CGI. Well, maybe not. I don't know. I didn't. I didn't notice any. Um, and it's got Corey Feldman as the voice of Donatello. Pretty cool. Um, so yeah, it's the the Ninja Turtles protect New York City, and you have April O'Neil played by an actress named Judith Hogue, and of course my favorite character out of all of them, Casey Jones, played by Elias Cotier. Great movie, very nostalgic. I watched that as a kid, and I so okay. In case you guys are wondering why I'm watching all these really old movies, there's something about watching a movie that you used to watch as a kid, and then you rewatch it when you're a lot older. You start to see things differently. Mm-hmm. I'll, I'll give sure. you a really, I'll give you a really good example from this movie. Uh, <laughs> it's kind of funny uh, when they cut when the Ninja Turtles. If you guys remember in the movie, when the Ninja Turtles come back to New York and they go back into the sewers, they find that kid Danny was hiding in like a closet or something like that, and they're like, "Damn, I could," or "Damn," they don't say "damn." Uh, they're like, "Man, I could go for some food right about now. I'm pretty hungry." And Danny goes, I had some pizza here a couple days ago, you guys, uh, if you guys want. And they're like, what? Pizza? Oh. And then Donatello runs over, opens the pizza up, and he closes it immediately. And Michelangelo, Michelangelo looks over and he's like, what? What is it? And he goes, well, that depends. Do you like, and he opens it up and goes, penicillin on your pizza? <laughs> and he oh. goes, oh. 
<laughs> when I was a kid, I don't know why, I thought penicillin was like a, a like a topping, like anchovies on pizza. Oh, that because oh, they were talking about in the beginning. Did of the you movie, ever say, "Hey, Dad, don't... can I get penicillin pizza?" No, no never, never. The Ninja but, Turtles like, don't like it, but, but I might. Here's here was my logic behind it. In the beginning <laughs> of the movie, they order the pizza, and he says. Uh, you put anchovies on this pizza, and you're gonna regret it, Mister. Like, so they really didn't like anchovies. So I thought penicillin was, oh. but now I'm like, oh, the pizza's just been right. sitting out for a long time. That's why they don't eat it. I get it now. So stuff like that, little stuff. Nice. But um, I plan on watching the second one Secret very soon. It's ooze. on Netflix. Secret of the Ooze is on Netflix. I don't know where I'm gonna find the third one. But Turtles in time. I watch the- that one was great. A question for you, really quick. Yeah. Uh, is this movie green like the Ninja Turtles? A green light. Oh, <laughs> yes. If you ever get a chance <laughs> and they're ever, they ever show the 1990 Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles in a theater, go see it. <laughs> that would be a fun way to watch it. Oh, my in- God. That'd be great. Or all three of them, as Adam mm. would do. Oh, I'd yeah. Watch, in a heartbeat. He'd watch all three, and then he'd watch the, uh, the Michael Bay Ninja Turtles. And <laughs> I got to rewatch those, but. We we digressed. Uh, what else did you see, Tommy? Rookie of the Year, 1993. And this stars a, re- a very young Thomas Ian Nicholas. Uh, he was in the uh, American Pie movies. It's got Gary Busey as an uh, like a really old pitcher that pre, lost pre, his Pre-crazy Busey, right? Pre-crazy. Oh, I think he was like borderline starting to get into the starting crazy. Starting to get crazy. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and then it's it has Daniel Stern. If you don't know Daniel Stern by the name, just remember oh, yeah. uh, He's a Home wet Alone. Bandit. He's a the city wet slicker. Bandit. Yep, and city slickers. But he actually directed this movie. Oh, he, shit. Re- he helped write it. Uh, a lot. Um, well, he oh. helped write it, but yeah, he he directed it, and so I'm like that, that. Yeah, that's. I, I get why his character was in there at all. Like honestly, if, I don't understand why his character was needed except for like comedy relief. You want to set up what this movie's about? Sorry. Uh, yeah, I'll just read from IMDb. When an accident miraculously gives a boy an incredibly powerful pitching arm, he becomes a major league pitcher for the Chicago Cubs. Basically, uh, he's going to catch a ball at his school. He trips on a baseball, falls really bad on his arm, has to get into a cast. And the cast, I know I'm showing you guys, but the <laughs> listeners can't see. Uh, he, his arm's up in like a 90 degree angle. And he has to be like that for four months. And while he's that healing, I guess it heals the tendon too tight. And so when he goes to throw a baseball, it locks up and you hear like, you can actually hear the. <laughs> <laughs> and then he goes to throw it. And so he can pitch like 100 mile an hour fastballs. Nice. Uh, and okay. so he goes and plays for the Chicago Cubs and he brings their season around, which is <laughs> hilarious because I got a friend who's a Cubs fan. And so I can't wait to talk to him about that movie and see what he had to think about it. Uh, anyways, and then uh, long story short, he trips on the mound later on in the movie and hits his arm again and it like releases the tension. Is it's that the that uh, end of take. the second act? Uh, no, that's the end. I'd say that's like the towards the middle to end of the third act. Oh, wow. Wow. <laughs> yeah. that's it was awesome. that late in the movie. Um, anyway, so yeah, good movie. Um, Yellow light, green light, red light? Uh, this one, I mean, it's nostalgic. So if you've never seen it, then yeah, go see it. Green light. Okay. If you've seen it before, I mean, we're talking about movies that probably are never going to be in theaters again. But yeah, there's in LA, theaters. they have theaters that release all kinds of junk like oh, this. Oh, okay. The well, yeah, if there's if you find a theater that shows Rookie of the Year and you've never seen it, green light, go see it. Nice. Yeah. One of those movies that you, you, I think you have to see. Oh, yeah, for sure. Well, uh, Tommy, did you see any other movies? <laughs> I did. I got two more. So they're, uh, they both star a very, very funny comedian. And if you guys have anything bad to say, I will fight you on this. <laughs> what up your dukes, Tommy? <laughs> oh, I got them right here. Uh... <laughs> So the first of the two movies came out in, let's go with the one that came out first uh, before the, the other one. Uh, my f- favorite of the two, of the two, uh, Employee of the Month, starring Dane Cook. Oh, I remember seeing that in theaters. Jessica man. Simpson, Dak Shepard, Andy Dick, uh, the, the, the Harlan, Harlan Williams. Williams. Yeah. Uh, right. And it's got that dude, what's his name? Tim Bagley, Bagley, Bagley. Uh, if you don't know who that guy is, uh, he's fun. he was hilarious, actually. Uh, he was in The Mask. He was in Knocked Up. Uh, he was in the Will and Grace TV show and the TV show. Not Monk. the Will and Grace movie? No, not the movie. Oh. 
You know, there's uh, no anyway, movie, right? That, that that that's the guy that was. He was the one that was in charge of the supermarket or the super right. save or whatever. Uh, so what's the movie about? Okay, so employee of the month, uh, a slacker competes with a repeat winner for the employee of the month title at work in order to gain the affections of a new female employee. So they work at this. It's basically Costco, but they can't call it Costco. They call it like Super Save, mm. but it's Costco. Sure. And yeah. uh, Dane Cook is a a boxer. And that's like the low, like the bottom, uh, as far as seniority and and like, uh, what's the word? Ranking, I guess. He's at the very bottom. Boxer is like the lowest. So, for instance, I thought you meant like physically, like a boxer, like the sport. Oh, no, like, no, no, what? No. Like, if they played been softball. To Costco, they have all the boxes. Well, the boxer brings the boxes to the registers and then uh, helps stock the shelves and stuff like that. So, Dane Cook is a boxer and Dax Shepard is the like head cashier, cashier number one. And he's been employee of the month for like like 17 months in a row. No one's ever done that. And if he gets his, if he gets number 18, he'll win (laughs) a semi newish, as they said it, uh, uh, Chevy Malibu. (laughs) The car looks awful. Like his car that he drives actually looks cooler than the Chevy Malibu. But anyways, so then I guess they get a new they get a new employee played by Jessica Simpson and Dane Cook like is just star or not starstruck uh the struck by the the love bug uh, I guess you could say <laughs> and they they find her uh uh paperwork and in the paperwork it says that she tends to go or tends to date the employee of the month so Dane Cook is like you know what? I'm a win employee of the month. And I guess it word gets back to Dax Shepard and there's a big like competition between the two of them. And I mean, if you follow the movie, it, it actually follows a pretty cool arc because you see Dane Cook is in with his, he's got this group of friends that work there and they have their own little hideout uh, <laughs> and in the, the rafters of the, the shelves or whatever. I love that, yeah. And yeah, they they look like a really cool, good good group of friends. And then when he decides to become employee of the month, then he like he kind of loses the, his friends because he starts becoming like Dax Shepard's character. And then it you see that arc finish where he's like he he quits the, his job and whatnot and tries to get his friends back. But then he's like, I want to win employee of the month, not for you, not for them. But for me, because I want to win it. And then that's what gets his friends back. And he's like, yeah, okay, well, we never really left. We're here. We're <laughs> here. We're here to help you out. So, yeah, he and, gets and a girl. He gets employee of the month. And Dak Shepard loses his job. <laughs> and, and and this is the height of all these guys. Of, of oh, fucking yeah, yeah. Dan Cook, Absolutely. Jessica well, Simpson, I think it was the Dak Shepard. Dax, I think it was the beginning of Dak Shepard. Yeah, I, don't I remember guess it was Dax close Shepard to without a that. paddle. Well, yeah, around the same time. Oh, I forgot about that. Yeah, and I, I guess before that, he had a fucking that prank show uh, on MTV, uh, Punked. And this was, oh, a, cast this was a he did Idiocracy, yeah, which I will never watch ever again because it's too close to reality. <laughs> no, oh, if you want to, listeners, if you want to listen to a very good podcast, listen to Dak Shepard's podcast, Armchair Expert, top notch, fantastic show, yeah. <laughs> um. Wait, the, the TV series? Is that what you're talking about? Life with Bonnie? No. What? No, I'm talking about a podcast. No, no. Uh, uh, oh, you were saying before punked. he did... Punk, the Ashton Kutcher punked. show, Punk. Oh, yeah. That was... Oh, yeah. 2003. Yeah. That was like okay. his first big thing. That's right. Uh, anyway, so yeah. Um, once again, uh, this movie, it's... I, I wouldn't give it a green light because it's... I mean, I like it. Yeah. And it's a funny movie. If you see it on demand or if you see it playing, stop and take a look. Yellow light, you know. Cool. Go ahead, watch it. Good movie. Uh, second movie, last movie is uh, second movie. Fourth movie, last movie I'm going to talk about. Also stars Dane Cook. It's called Good Luck Chuck. Came out in 2007, a year after Employee of the Month. Uh, it's got uh, Dane Cook. It has, uh, what's her name? Jessica Alba. <laughs> Jessica Alba. Dan Fogel. And, yeah. Uh, Connor Price plays a young Chuck. Um, anyways, oh, did, did you remember cast. him? He was one of the uh, one of the guys that played young Sean Spencer in Psych. Oh, uh, 
So, okay. Yeah. All right. Yeah. <laughs> cool. What's the movie um, about? So the, this movie, uh, in order, so it says here, in order to keep the women of his dreams from falling for another guy, Charlie Logan has to break the curse that has made him wildly popular with single women. And that is that he, if they sleep with Charlie once, the next man that they meet will be their true love. And so you see in the movie, uh, it starts off with him as a kid, and they're in a they're at a party, and they're playing that game seven minutes in heaven yeah. or whatever. It's you you play spin the bottle, and then you and you end up in the closet for seven minutes. You can do whatever you want. Did anybody uh, actually ever play that game as a kid? No. Okay. <laughs> we played Truth or Dare. We played a lot of Truth or Dare, and there was a lot more truth than than dares because. <laughs> My friends are dumb. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> just kidding, guys, if you're listening. Not that you are. Um, but uh, so, yeah, so this, he gets a hex from the girl that goes into the closet with him. She wants to make out with him, and he, like, makes fun of her, and, and she puts a on him. And then he meets Jessica Alba, and he's, like, madly in love with Jessica Alba. As he's dating her, he realizes that this hex thing is true and he doesn't want to end things with her because he doesn't want her to find her true love after breaking it off. It's funny. It's really good. It's definitely rated R. I'll say that. <laughs> There's oh, yeah. a, lot of, a lot of stuff in there that uh, you wouldn't be able to show on TV. All right, guys. Uh, anything else we want to throw in here? No, I'm solid. Stay sanitary. Uh, yeah. Stay tuned for our next episode. <laughs> doom, 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 doom.